Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. A great day to you and welcome to another edition of My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and our guest today is Karen Michike, Literacy Nassau's Executive Director. Karen Michike has been leading Literacy Nassau since early 2010. During her tenure, she has brought the organization to new heights by more than tripling its annual budget and developing programs to widen its service population. She has streamlined operations to maintain the highest level of efficiency and accountability among Literacy Nassau's 500 plus volunteers, and has created new opportunities for tutors and teachers to become certified in Orton, Gillingham, and has developed the concept of donation-based tutoring for children with learning disabilities, most notably dyslexia. These opportunities bridge the gap for students of all ages, but build the capacity of teachers and strengthen Long Island's public school system as well. Karen's vision of helping all Nassau County residents find their path to literacy is the result of growing up with a dyslexic mother, who she describes as brilliant but stifled by her disability. Outside of her passion for literacy, Karen is the proud mom of six-year-old Haley and four-year-old Julianne. And in her free time, she enjoys reading and spending time with her husband and daughters in Cape Cod. Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Bill. Now, Karen, tell us about the origin of Literacy Nassau, when it began, how it was created. Sure, of course. So Literacy Nassau actually is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, and we're very excited about that. Um, It started in 1968, and uh, it started like a lot of great nonprofits start in the basement of a church with a lot of women (laughs) who felt like they really wanted to do something good for the community. Um, Seven years prior, a woman named Ruth Colvin up in Syracuse noticed that there were Uh, an alarming number of illiterate adults in her community. And given that Syracuse is an education-based town because of the university, she felt that it was completely inequitable that so many many adults should not know how to read and write. So um, she took it upon herself to develop a a training for volunteers who were interested in helping out, whereby they learn how to become adult literacy tutors. And it took seven years for that to trickle down to Nassau County. But now, in fact, you'll see that there's a literacy volunteers center in just about every county in all of New York State as a result of her. Those church basements are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we're going to have some author... um, come to us with a book about what's in the church basement or something, because that's where so much started out, an of idea, course. generation, uh, I think almost similar, it might not have been a church basement, but the game of basketball, but things like that. We, we come up with good ideas, etc. Now, in the introduction, I use the word dyslexia, and you and I were talking about it. Uh, we, many of us have heard it, but I certainly didn't know really what it is. So could you explain what that is? Sure. Dyslexia is a language-based learning disability. Um, And it presents itself in lots of different ways, but essentially the person struggles to read, write, and spell. Um, It's not a visual problem. It's not that they cannot see the letters. It's just that they have a a challenge in their brain. It's a neuroscientific problem in which the brain struggles to make those sound symbol connections. And there are ways to remediate it, but it is not curable. If you have dyslexia, you have it forever. Um, The good side of dyslexia is that the creative side of the brain, which is the right side of the brain, is very overactive in dyslexics. So you find lots and lots of amazing people, famous people like Steven Spielberg, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, Pablo Picasso, I could go on and on, all having dyslexia because the creative side of their brain is so tremendous and they think outside the box. Wow, that's that's really amazing. And if if I understand it the way uh, you and I talked before the show, where we might see a word, the word Brooklyn, Mm -hmm. they might almost see a puzzle or something they would have to look into to find those letters and interpret it. and Exactly. In order for um, a person with dyslexia to be able to read a word, they have to know the phonics rules behind it to be able to decode it accurately. Um, and so the deconstruction of a word like Brooklyn, for example, you have a two-syllable word, Brook and Lynn are the two syllables. The O-O in Brook says uh, because that's one of the sounds that that vowel team makes. It's closed in by the K, so it says Brook. And then the L-Y-N, the Y is closed in by the N, and the Y is acting as a vowel in that syllable, and it says the short I sound of I. So to you and I, like, that's not what you would go through if you're looking at the word Brooklyn. You just think Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yeah. But for 
a child or an adult with dyslexia, they have to go through a laborious pace to figure out how to decode it. Now, when did you come aboard to Literacy Nassau, uh, and what did you see as your mission? Well, back then, uh, so I came on board in 2010. I've been there for about eight and a half years now. And um, back then, the mission was really just to teach adults how to read, write, and speak English. Um, At the time, I was faced with the challenge of having a gigantic waiting list, because as you can imagine, if you look at the landscape of Nassau County, it is not today what it was in 1968, 50 years ago. We have a tremendous immigrant population who we serve, and we had easily over 150 students on our waiting list. So my initial charge was to make sure that I found ways to serve them and quickly. So you have job security. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for now, we hope so. another way of looking at it, right? (laughs) Yes. And... um, Now, immediately after you uh, came on, what was the real focus then, and has it changed over the years? Yes, of course it has. Um, So back then, my focus was on the immigrant population. I said, we have all these people who are waiting for services. How can we best utilize the the resources that we have, which, of course, are our volunteer tutors? So we revamped our trainings. We kind of um, rerouted our pipeline for students, you know, through our program to make it a little bit more efficient. And uh, once we felt like we were really adequately serving the population and the waiting list had diminished, we then moved on to the next largest population that we serve, which are adults with developmental disabilities. And we began searching for new ways to address the needs of that population. Now, you were telling me, and I thought when we hear education, et cetera, we automatically think of children, little children going to school. I guess that's the image. Mm -hmm. But you were telling me, uh, basically, I guess, in your enrollment, that is a very minor point or number of people as compared to the adults and older people. Absolutely. So Literacy Nassau was designed for adults. And so for the last 50 years, that's all we've been doing up until this year. This is the first year where we're actually serving children. I'm super excited about it. Um, this year, we'll be serving 15 children in our tutoring center. Um, and it sounds like it's a tiny number, but I'm sure that it will grow over time. The reason we can only serve so many children or so few children, rather, is because we need tutors to be trained in that capacity and the training takes at least a year so it's hard to find volunteers who are willing this to is commit. really a specialty almost like it a is. medical specialty absolutely and as you and i were talking i had no idea what's involved as most of us don't we don't go behind the curtain of someone's life mm-hmm. but there's really a lot going on here that's right yes indeed now if we didn't know about this and if someone hadn't been listening to the show or didn't how would they know about literacy nasa because to be honest, I didn't know about it till I met you. Well, sure enough. I mean, you would Google it, right? You would be Googling literacy services for children or whatever like that. And uh, Literacy NASA thankfully pops up pretty high on Google. It's literacynasa.org. Um, all of the information is right there on, on our website. Um, people are pretty tech savvy these days with their smartphones and whatnot. So I think people would be able to find us just from so that. Fine. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's fair enough. And uh, Karen, at this point in the show, we'd like to remind our listeners that if you're just tuning in, you're listening to My Hometown on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and our guest today is Karen Michike. She is the Executive Director of Literacy Nassau, and that's what we're all learning about and finding out what's going on there. Um, Karen, you... Uh, have remarkable benefactor in your program and, and new and expanded space. Tell us about that. And by the way, where is your space? So our new space is in Wanta. It's at One Ivy Lane, which is right off of Wanta Avenue. It's on the campus of the St. Francis de Chantal Roman Catholic Church. It's just behind it in an old converted Catholic school building. Nice and, look. Yeah. Sorry, no, go ahead. No, yeah, I just love that. <laughs> what was it, One Ivy Lane? One Ivy Lane. Isn't that such a nice address? It, it's, it's so nice. And I was trying to think, is that more a movie of the week, a Hallmark <laughs> movie, or is it uh, a mystery? One Ivy Lane, what's behind the doors there? So what comes out? Um, now, you, uh, I guess, rent, not you personally, but Literacy Nassau so rents it from uh, Yes, we are St. renting Francis? it. We are renting it from the church. But to just head back to the question you just asked me previously about our gigantic benefactor, um, I have to, I would be remiss if I didn't speak about them. John and Janet Kornreich are two of the most fabulous uh, donors to Literacy Nassau and also real true friends of the organization. Um, they have a family foundation and they've been supporting literacy for easily 15 years. Um, Janet Kornreich was a, uh, a nursery teacher and she believes so strongly in the power of literacy and how it can shape uh, an individual's life, and even so much so that her grown son is an author. Um, so yeah, they they gave us a million dollars in 2016, which is something we've never seen before. And it's over the course of eight years to give me the time to develop the infrastructure so that we can pilot this donation-based tutoring in Nassau and Suffolk counties. Now, what's their name again? They should get a little credit. I'm, I'm oh yeah, absolutely. Of course, it's John and Janet Cornreich. 
And I was going to say to you, somewhere in there, I thought one of them or both of them would be the teachers or somebody to have that uh, love of literacy. Of course, that the passion. Kind of appreciate mm-hmm. it, et cetera. So, yes. Um, now, what we're talking, if someone is hearing this, but they, you know, they haven't had time to go to the Internet or whatever, um, can you tell us, if they want to get in touch with you, either as a volunteer or saying, maybe someone in my family needs this or learn more, sure. uh, how do they reach you? Uh, websites, locations, phone numbers? Of course. So our phone number is 516-867-3580. Our website, again, is www.literacynassau.org. Um, and the email address is really easy. It's mail, M-A-I-L, at literacynassau.org. Very easy. And, of course, we'll give this again to our audience. So if you're thinking of it or you say, gee, my sister, my neighbor, um, you'll get a chance to write it down if you didn't already have that chance. The new location, uh, does it offer you some improvements? I know you're doing a lot of the handiwork <laughs> there. I think you have a, a little, um, what is it, a toolbox and a paint yeah. can and everything. Yeah, well, thankfully, I have a fabulous contractor. I, I can also uh, shout out RTH contractors. RTH? RTH All right, and if Sons, they're helping, yes. We no, they're doing them. a great job. They're really helping and us And their out. sons, too, you said. RTH and Sons, and yes, sons. that's right. No daughters. <laughs> no daughters. Um, yeah, no, they've been doing a wonderful job, but there are certain things that um, we don't have the, the capacity to afford, like certain luxuries, like painting, right? Whenever you get a great contractor, mostly they won't paint for you. So I've been up on scaffolds for the last couple of weeks doing my uh, doing my due diligence and painting the, the roofs of these buildings and other such And things. as you and I were saying beforehand, we don't realize how many times entrepreneurs, directors, the important people, we have them on our shows – and they will tell us they get down and do the dirty work. Someone yeah. else will say, "Oh, I don't pick up pencils; I only pick up pens or something." Mm-hmm. But the entrepreneur, the director, the manager mm-hmm. will say, "Yeah, I'm in on the weekend cleaning that, Absolutely. or painting that, or setting it up." Yep. And uh, we don't realize how much that comes with the territory. But that's why you're so good at what you do, so successful, and uh, getting great results. Thank you. Now, what do you see for the future of literacy, Nassau? Uh, and, and what would you know? What direction would you like to see it go? Oh, so many things. The thing is that. I- I feel like as being a literacy organization that's intended to serve adults, the problem would not exist if we were serving these people as children, right? So if you've got these kids who are coming here from other countries who are thrown into, let's say, an earth science class, for example, but they don't speak a word of English, how do you expect them to learn the content of the earth science program? That's what I feel the big issue is for the future moving forward. So once I conquer the dyslexia thing, right, it's going to take me some time. But once (laughs) that's done, my next thing is that I'd love to create sort of a bridge program for children who are coming here from other countries before they matriculate into public school. Because the ENL programs in school are great, but they're not enough. If the children were to come into classrooms already knowing how to speak English and how to read at least somewhat and how to write somewhat, it would create so much of a lessened learning gap for them. And I really feel like that would be great in the future. But that's a long way off. Now, that's a great wish that you have. And obviously, you're very passionate about it. But if if God says, I'm going to give Karen her wish today instead of that lotto ticket or something, (laughs) what are you going to do with, you know, 300, 800, 900 more people, 9,000 more people who uh, are knocking at your door saying, ready, I listened to you, and uh, here we are. I'm going to duck under my (laughs) covers, and I'm going to hide for a while. I really, I don't know. I'm not in a position right now where I could could help those, those students. I would need to do the same thing I did in developing the program right now for learning disabled children which is to do research, to get the proper training, to make sure that I had the right faculty on board who could help with that. Um, And I'm sure we would devise it in our tutoring center that we just built because during the day right now, it's going to be more or less empty. Um, so oh, we'd good be able point. To yeah, you can use the downtime. That's perfect, like any business. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you can see to our audience how much passion Karen has for this. So if you're hearing something that's uh, twinking your mind a little bit or saying, does that apply to my son, daughter, or somebody else? Write the information down so that at the end of the show, someone can at least follow up. Mm-hmm. Karen, this is a great time to take a break, and I'd like to let our audience know that I'm Bill Horan, and our special guest today is Karen Michike. She's speaking about literacy NASA, and she knows about it because she's the executive director. You're listening to My Hometown on the Voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Bell, and I invited you here to my hotel room to talk about your cheeks. Your big, beautiful cheeks. Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm talking about swabbing them. Did you guys know that each year 20,000 Americans with blood cancer are searching for their life-saving marrow match? Can you even believe that? I mean, people need marrow, you guys, and we have it. So here's how we can help. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is swab your cheek. 
Then go to Gift of Life Marrow Registry. It's so easy. Anyone can do